Hey, everybody. I'm so glad that you're back here with us uh, for this next story that we're going to be talking about um, as we journey together through the book of Acts. Uh, last Sunday, uh, you would have heard the Peter and Cornelius story as we, we see the, that the Holy Spirit is bringing the gospel out to the Gentiles and more people are becoming saved. And it's this clash of cultures between the the, the Jewish culture and, and the Gentile culture as, as, as the, with the different foods and the different cultures and the different, and so you're seeing this clash of cultures happen and the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ spreading. And um, the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles. And now we're going to be jumping back in at Acts chapter 11, starting in verse 1. So now the apostles and the brothers who are throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, he went to the uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, by no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, what God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to me from Caesarea. And the spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel um, stand in his house and say, send to Joppa and bring Simon who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak the holy word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent and they glorified God saying, then to the Gentiles and also, also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Now, those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this came to the ears of the church of Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people, and in Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. Now in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea, and they did so sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So that's a big passage. I mean, basically you, you have Peter explaining how the gospel transcends culture. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, look, look, this is not just for us, right? This is for, um, you know, which would have been the Greeks, you know, whenever it says Hellenists, that's what it's talking yep. about. And, and then the, the, he just retells the story, just like we're retelling the story, right? <laughs> he retells the story and says, this is what happened. This and, is the vision. And I, I, you know, I think something that really stood out to me is they all sat there silent because this is a group of people who feel very strongly about their religious convictions, about circumcision, about what it meant to be a Jew. 
and they're trying to follow God, but God is literally specifically saying, include this group of people. Yes. That would have been very distasteful to everyone in the room. There was a, there was a, a certain amount of racism involved here mm -hmm. where it's like, I don't want to have anything to do with them. We don't, we don't want to mix with them culturally, um, nationally in any way. Yeah, there was an enormous amount of animosity between the two, the two groups. And so it would have been shocking to them. And it just says that they, they all were silent. Yeah. So there's this moment. And it's just neat that it describes it down to that detail. Mm -hmm. And then they go, well, I guess the Gentiles also got his granted repentance that leads to life. <laughs> and they like, turn the corner. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we know they don't, they don't fully do that perfectly because later there's problems again. Yes. But, but literally they're making an effort to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit into areas that they didn't expect him to lead them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you have the church in Antioch, which is sort of you begin to see um, the gospel being preached to the Jews. But there's still groups of Jewish believers who are only speaking to other Jews. Mm -hmm. And so there's this, we're only going to talk to our people. And, you know, a few people kind of uh, were radical enough, I guess, to, to keep doing what the Holy Spirit was doing and pursuing um, the Gentiles. And so that's the story. I guess, did anything stand out to you that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, there's the, the, a couple things. One is, it's interesting that God gives this vision to Peter. And it, it, I, I never noticed this before until you just read through it again, that he says that the, God gave him that vision and spoke that to him three times. And it's like Peter's arguing with God. Completely. Like, yeah, no, God, you got this wrong. You know, this isn't going to go out to the Gentiles. Surely is, no. Yeah, surely no. And it says <laughs> no, Lord, which is hilarious because it's one or the other. It's either no or he's Lord. It's, it can't be both. Ooh, that's good. You know, that'd preach. Yeah. So the the interesting thing to me is is Peter's stubbornness here. Yeah. yeah. And you actually see that because there, there's other times where there's things that happen in threes with Peter. So Jesus asking, "Do you love me?" Oh, you're right. And then uh, and denying Peter him. denying Jesus three times, and then. God giving him this vision and saying three times, no, the gospel is for the Gentiles as well. They're included in this. Yes. It's just interesting that God understands, you know, it's a, it's a good reminder that God understands our own obstacles and stubbornness and, um, and meets us where we are and gives us what we need so that we can get on board with what he's, what he's doing. Um, and his patience with Peter is pretty, pretty interesting to me. And my assumption is, is that God's saying something to, to us as well in some area of our life that we're saying no to. Yeah. You know, God, and he'll keep coming back. He's patient with us, but he'll keep coming back to us and saying, hey, what you think is right in this situation, mm. you've justified it completely. You believe this 100%. Mm. You're wrong. Mm. And, and the Lord will keep meeting us there and saying, actually, it's this. And he'll flip our worlds upside down saying, what you think is right is actually wrong. And what you think is wrong is actually right. And he'll, he's teaching you, you know, what he wants you to do. And so, you know, I think it's a good point, you know, in a group, in your group, or even in personal reflection for you to be thinking about, is there anything that you're saying no Lord to where you're saying, yes, you are Lord, but I'm not going to do what you say that you need to be saying yes, Lord to and um, that's the call for everybody this week as you kind of work your way through this story. And I think there's a lot to discuss in here um, that we won't talk about, but um, please dig in. Everybody get out your Bibles and continue to be studying through the book of Acts together.